Hey guys, this is John from US Dash Camera. Today I got something very special for you. No, this is not the best value dash camera of 2015. That was a joke. This is a $14 dash camera that's one of the top selling dash cameras on Amazon right now, and I just bought it for fun to see if it was actually usable. And I'll tell you this, it's not. And at $14, it's not even worth it. But let's go ahead and take a look at the camera and see what's included. Right off the bat, you can see the label on the box. Looks as if someone printed it out on regular printer paper and cut it out themselves and taped it on. So I don't have any sharp knife or scissors right now, so I'm just going to use a pen. Rip it open. So there's the camera and some bubble wrap. Very high quality divider, as you can see. They spared no expense. Here's a mini USB data cable, the mount, the charging cable, and some instructions. Road safety guard. So while I was looking through this instruction manual, it seemed like it was pretty generic because it does actually list some things that don't apply to this actual camera that I got and I'll touch on that in a sec. But overall, for a $14 camera, it's nice that they actually do include some instructions because I've had expensive cameras that didn't come with instructions and they just expect you to look them up online. So it says it has 1280 by 960 as the highest resolution, which does not seem to be true at all. So as I said, this is the mini USB charging cable. This camera does use a battery and not a capacitor as expected. Pretty standard suction cup mount with a tripod screw on it. So you can use this for a Mobius or another camera if you buy this and realize how bad it is and end up buying something else. So there's always that. And a data cable in case you want to connect the camera to a computer without taking the memory card out for whatever reason. So let's go ahead and take a look at the actual camera. At least they do pack it pretty nicely. So it's shaped pretty strange, it has a flip down screen. It's pretty dirty for whatever reason and there's a little screen protector. Took me a couple minutes to actually get that off. Reminded me of the Mini 0806 screen protector that took a long time to get off also. So there's some buttons. Sort of looks like a camcorder that you flip on its side. Here you can see this is where you plug the power in. On the other side, got an AV out. And then an SD card slot, and this is full size SD, so I will have to use an adapter because I only have micro SD. Does have IR lights on the front, but that is pretty pointless because it's just going to reflect on the window. Power and record button on the back. And doesn't have a charge, so it's turning off immediately. So there are a couple things that I noticed weren't accurate in the manual. For one, it says there's a HDMI slot or output which does not exist there and on the other side it says AV out on it but on here it actually claims it's a 5 volt direct current slot so it claims it's for power but the actual camera says it's AV out so I don't know what to believe I don't have cables for either so I won't be able to test that one interesting thing about this is it does actually have a removable battery, which seems to be very uncommon actually, but I'm sure replacing the battery would cost almost as much as the actual camera, so probably pointless to ever need to do that. There you can see the standard tripod mount for the suction cup. Now since it's so long and pretty deep, it won't fit directly behind your mirror. You will have to put it somewhere where it's not going to hit the mirror. 
So overall, it's cheap, but the price is cheap, so what can I expect? Now here's a comparison to my G1WC, which was heavily modded. I will provide links down below to how I got it all black and added the polarized lens adapter on it. But as you can see, I don't really like the shape of either of them, but I still would prefer the G1W. So let's go ahead and put a memory card in and go through the menu. Gotta plug it in real quick. And this door on the side is completely pointless because while it's plugged in, it's not able to close. So let's go ahead and look at the menu now. Now to get to the menu, as usual, you do have to stop the recording. And as like most dash cameras, it does start recording automatically, so you have to stop it. Now we get to the menu. If you hit mode, you'll actually switch to the other menu option. Let's go back to the main menu. We got movie size, it says HD currently. Now to select something, you actually have to hit the record button again. So it claims that it's 1920 by 1080 at the top, but that's not true. It's still only 720 at just a higher bit rate. But regardless, both modes have really low bit rate at 720. And even at 720, there's no way it's actually 720, as you'll see in the footage later. But all of these settings are pretty standard. There is a loop time, which is nice because some cameras actually don't even have that. But overall, it's nothing special. So let's go ahead and look at the other menu now. So to get to that, we gotta hit the mode button. Excuse my screw up. So we have sounds. It does actually let you customize the different sounds quite a bit, which is surprising. Power frequency, which as usual you want that at 60 hertz if you're in North America. That'll prevent the flickering of street lights in video. Power save, I would assume, just turns the camera off after a certain amount of time once the car shuts off, or if it's not plugged in at all. Now the panel protect doesn't seem to work, at least I assume that it's supposed to turn the LCD screen off after 30 seconds as I set it to, but it stays on regardless, so I'm not sure what that's for. The most surprising thing about this camera is how many different languages it has. So there's TV out, NTSC is for North America. For whatever reason lets you change the startup image, so you could actually load your own image if you wanted, which is actually something I've never seen on a dash camera. So we got format, which I will do right now. And that actually closed the menu, so let's go back to it. So we got reset and version and the IR LED which I'm going to turn off because all that's going to do is reflect in the window. So again, reset all and version are on the last page. So that would be everything in the menu. Now you can actually record audio or take pictures or actually look at your files while the camera's on but I personally never do any of that. But it could be useful if you want to show perhaps a police officer on the side of the road that you weren't at fault in an accident. You could show him right there in your car. So like I said before, this dumb cover on the side gets in the way. There's no point because you're gonna leave it plugged in your car anyway, so I'm just gonna tear it off. So let's go ahead and look at some footage.
Now, the first thing I noticed when watching the footage was how it seemed so zoomed in. It almost seems like it's zoomed in and is only viewing about 45 degrees in front of my car because stuff that I could see th out the front of my windshield I couldn't actually see in the video even though I'm sitting back a couple feet from the camera. Typically the camera has a much wider view than what the driver actually sees because it's so far forward but somehow this camera actually has a narrower field than the driver. And like I mentioned before I switched between HD and Full HD and no matter what when I checked the files it said it was 720p the only difference was the bitrate so when I was recording in the supposed HD 720 it was about 2.7 to 3.1 megabits per second which is really low but my Blackview cameras with the rear channel has a 720 about the same bitrate and it still looks way better than this. Now in the full HD mode or the FHD mode it's still 720 but records in about 5.7 megabits per second so it's higher bitrate but it still claims it's only 720. Either way they both look very bad they both look very zoomed in you can't even see at first I actually thought I had triggered some sort of zoom mode because it has such a close zoomed up view and such a low angle or range of view that it's just basically unusable. There's There could be a car to your 10 or 11 o'clock that's not going to be in the video right next to you. And like I said, maybe this is technically 720p, but the image sensor and picture is so terrible that it might as well be standard definition. So here's an example of how crappy the field of view is. And also, surprisingly, this picks up pretty good audio as you'll hear. Hi, what can I make for you today? Hi, can I get a four piece order of mozzarella sticks? Okay. A, uh... So in this video, you'll actually see a car pull out and almost cause an accident. But the video quality is so terrible at night that it's almost pointless to be recording with this thing. You could hardly see that car. Now next I'll compare it to my Blackview DR650 GW2 channel, which actually doesn't even have the best video quality out there. Blackviews for an expensive camera have a notoriously lower quality video than most high-end cameras, or at least single channel cameras, but you can see that it's still leagues ahead of this $14 supposed HD camera. And notice how much wider the angle of view is. You could buy a $50 to $60 G1WC and it's going to have almost as good of quality as the Blackview. Now the G1WCs don't have as good of night quality, but in the day they're very comparable. So yeah, don't buy this camera. Check the description down below. I'll recommend some of my favorite cameras that range from $50 to $400. So look down below, hit like, hit subscribe if you like this video or my other videos. I've reviewed models from $40 to over $400, so check those other reviews out. As usual, drive safe, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.